Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today, I want to take a look at three separate things here on the layout uh, that we've been working on. Specifically, let's take a look at how the pour came out on the buried track. Then we're going to go ahead and attach the fascia to the front of the uh, modules and get them ready for adding the blue point switch machine controls, finally. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to create roadbed for turnouts. You know, it's something that I uh, apparently skipped over when I was showing you how to install the Electrofrog turnouts. So somebody reminded me that I did not cover that. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to uh, bend the cork roadbed into position and get it ready to install the Electrofrog turnouts. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Okay, so here we are uh, where we did the pour the other day. You can see the uh, plaster has dried firmly. Uh, it did sink down a little bit. There was a little bit of uh, shrinkage here, but you know, it's got good coverage all the way around. I've gone ahead and cleaned the surface of the rails so they're sparkling clean, and you can see that we did get the web of the rail cleaned out. So basically then, when we get ready to do the, uh, the work here in the yard uh, on the scenery, we'll go ahead and fill uh, each side here with ballast and, and dirt and weeds and that kind of thing to give it a well-used and somewhat overlooked uh, uh, look on the layout. And here, somewhere in this section, I'm going to add a crossing, as I mentioned earlier. You know, I poured through a bunch of photographs in my books, and I found a number of cases where they laid timbers just on the inside of the rails here and then filled it with dirt or you know earth or whatever, a mixture of probably ballast and earth and the like, uh, in order to allow a crossing where uh, vehicles could uh, get easily across the tracks. So I think that's the route that I'm going to go with, you know, whenever you can follow what the prototype did. But right now I want to show you that uh, we're able to run trains down into here. And we'll cut loose the cars as we come. One of them's already cut loose. Okay, so we can cut our cars loose and come on back up. So as you can see, there was no problem with the, uh, uh, with the flanges on the locomotive or the cars hitting on any of the plaster or any of the uh, chairs uh, in here. So, you know, you can pour this without any issues and it's going to give you a good smooth uh, surface to run with. Okay, so that's it for that and uh, we'll set that aside now and let's go ahead and move on to adding the uh, fascia to the front of the modules. Now what I've got here is a piece of 1 8 inch hardboard. A uh, common name for it is masonite, but of course this is made by a lot of manufacturers besides masonite now. But that's all it is. It's got a nice smooth side and then it's got a more textured side that I use as the rear. So you want that nice smooth side on the front. Now I assume that uh, this type of product is available in the UK and other countries around the world. You might also be able to find thin product like MDF or even uh, plywood uh, in a very thin uh, thickness uh, that you could use for your, uh, uh, for your fascia. Now there's a couple of different reasons for putting a fascia on here. Number one, it's going to be painted and give it a more finished look. You won't see the, the bare wood and the plywood and the foam layers uh, in the background there. Uh, also, it's going to protect the foam because this foam would tend to get chewed up on the edges quite a lot uh, if you left it exposed like that. Also, 
it's going to protect the scenery here on the edge of the layout. I've given it a quarter inch lip here along the top in order to uh, protect that scenery somewhat. And so that's, uh, that's the three basic reasons that I use it. And I'm going to paint it the ubiquitous uh, forest green color. Since the GWR used green for their locomotives to a large degree, uh, it seems appropriate uh, as well. Plus, you know, you're going to have a lot of, of foliage here along the front. And the basic idea of the fascia is also to help, uh, you know, get you to focus on what's on the layout, not the distractions of the construction of the layout, what's up front, all of that kind of thing. Eventually, I will probably add a drop cloth here or a curtain uh, on the bottom of this to hide the legs and everything else below the, uh, below the layout itself. Now, what I'm going to use today in order to attach these are a number six by three quarter uh, wood screw. And you can see it's got the uh, head, uh, angled head so that it will fit flush. And then I'm going to use these finishing washers. And I think I ordered these probably off of uh, Amazon or eBay one. And uh, the idea here is the screw fits in here and it fits flush, okay? And then this sits flush against the uh, uh, fascia itself. So it's going to, you know, it's flared out, so it holds it, it protects it, and because this is only an eighth of an inch thick, it's going to help prevent that screw head from popping through and your fascia basically popping loose. So let me go ahead, what I have to do, I've already pre-measured uh, places where I want to install these. So I just need to drill some holes uh, as pilot holes and then we'll get to, to screwing it in. Now, I went with a five inch uh, thick, uh, or five inch width um, fascia here because that gets me down below the uh, level of the, the wood that was used for the side of the baseboard. And as I said, it brings me up about a quarter of an inch above the level of the, uh, of the uh, foam itself. And further down at the other end of the, uh, of the layout, I've actually gone up to almost six inches, uh, giving me almost an inch above the level of the, uh, of the foam. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's going to allow me to add a little bit of relief down at that end because, you know, that's where I'm going to have a little bit more natural scenery with a meadow and some cows or sheep lollygagging around. And uh, so, I'm, you know, that will allow that to be done. And, you know, it just adds a little bit of more interest to the uh, front of the layout instead of this long, boring, straight stretch of fascia. So let me go ahead and we'll get these holes drilled and get this done. Okay, so I've zoomed in here on this corner here where I want to start. And I'm going to begin by just drilling out some pilot holes here. There. And then I'm going to give you a good close look at this. So that's what one of these finishing washers look like. It's got sort of a recessed cup-like shape and then the screw just drops right into it. And so it holds it in place and it will hold that washer up against the fascia and protect it from uh, the screw head popping through it. So let me go ahead and we'll put that right in place here. And There, that's good and tight. And then we'll get the second one down here. So now you can see we've got a nice finished appearance here. And once I paint this, I'm going to just take a, uh, a roller and just paint the uh, paint over everything. So these will just kind of blend in. And on the uh, on the, the layout where I've already used them, you don't you hardly even notice that these are here at all. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead. Let's pull on down, and we'll do the rest of them down here uh, on the uh, front here of the fascia, so we can get this thing ready to go. 
Okay, here's another one. Now on the corners, like I just showed you, I typically do two of these. And then in the centers, I'll just do one. And that tends to, to be sufficient to hold it in place because, you know, these aren't going to be getting a lot of, uh, of push and pull on them, then, uh, you know, as far as that goes. So it doesn't, it doesn't take much to hold them in place. There we go. Okay. Let's move on down to the next one. Okay, and I'll take that one off. And we can go ahead and pre-drill it. Okay. There we go. Now let me pull on down and we'll do the other two at the far end. And that'll be it. Okay, so that's all it takes for one module. You know, it took long, much longer to actually cut the hardboard for this than it does to install it. So it's a fairly straightforward, easy uh, project to do. And it really cleans up the front of your layout and gives it a finished look. And I'll give you a, a tip here. In a future episode, I'll show you how to add a six inch shelf on the front of the layout. And that will uh, serve a great purpose because you know how it is. When people are running trains, they invariably set throttles. They, uh, they set their uh, uh, various things they're carrying in their hands. They might have a cup of coffee, set that on the layout. So having a shelf along the front of the layout really helps to prevent the damage that occurs when people do those kind of things. So, uh, but that's, you know, we'll reserve that for a little bit in the future, just before I get ready to paint the fascia itself, because we want it all painted at the same time. Okay, let's move on now and take a look at how to create roadbed for turnouts. Now, since I've already laid all of the turnouts on the module, I'm going to have to show you how to do this uh, using a section of the Piedmont Southern where I'm uh, working currently. And as you can see, this is a microengineering turnout, very similar to the uh, Pico Electrofrog. Um, the first step you want to do in, in uh, setting this up is take your Sharpie and do an outline of the, uh, of the turnout itself. And this is going to be where, you know, the, uh, where the roadbed is going to be. Matter of fact, I'm going to make this a little bit wider at this point, just to make sure that I cover it. There we go. Okay. And then I've also marked the ends of the turnout at each end here, as well as outside the profile of the, uh, uh, of the road bed itself. And then of course these on either side here you can see uh, the area where the uh, actual mainline road bed is going to operate. Okay, so let's get the turnout out of the way. And the first thing I want to do here is bring down this guy here. Because this is going to be the transition road bed. So you set that in here along the line and then you fit it within the confines of those lines that you just drew. Okay, So that it's curving through and taking the shape of the track in the turnout itself. Okay, So I'm just going to bring this on through here 
and connect it through on this line that I've drawn here for the midpoint or center line of the uh, turnout. So this basically becomes the outside of the road bed. So it's going to give you a nice smooth transition there. Then I've got this other piece. Now one thing I want to point out, uh, you'll note right here there's a break between two pieces of foam. Now I always feel it's important to set your road bed up so that it crosses this gap in the foam. Because if there's any slight deviation uh, in the height of each, you can correct it by simply sanding the top of the road bed in order to get rid of any humps. And, and you know, you can check that using the, uh, the steel ruler method that I showed you previously. Okay, so let's get on back to this and set it up. I'm bringing the other piece down against the first one. And here's another thing I want to point out to you. You'll notice up at this end here, I've offset the ends just a little bit. I think it's a good idea to always do that so that when the, you uh, add the row bed for the extension, uh, they're not uh, right up against one another. The, the joints are offset just a little. And I, I think that helps in order to preserve the flow through here. And then just go through the process of setting this piece of uh, row bed up, okay? And then for the center, that's when you start adding other things in here because you want to get this area in the center filled in somewhat, okay? And I'm going to bring in some more pieces of row bed here. Okay. And it's not necessary to fill in every little gap. You can do it if you want. And, uh, you know, let me point out, uh, if you don't want to do all of this cutting and fitting like this, you can purchase prefab cork road bed uh, for turnouts. So it's not something that you absolutely need to do yourself. You can go ahead and purchase it. And I, I think Midwest uh, Products makes um, road bed uh, out of cork, you know, just like this. And I, I would imagine other manufacturers do as well. I've never used it, so I can't say, you know, you know how well it works or anything. But at any rate, you can see I've pieced this together. And as I say, it's not absolutely necessary that you get this all um, filled in here and absolutely tight as a drum because the ballast is going to fill in here for you. Now, another thing that we will do is after I put down all the glue and or the adhesive and put the foam down, then uh, we will allow that to dry. And then I come back typically and you can take a sanding block or even a, a, a band sander, anything like that, and you can bring this all down to uh, the same level just to make sure. It's always a good idea just to make sure that you don't have any uh, roughness or any uh, little bumps in the track uh, uh, or in the road bed itself that you come in here with a sanding block and go over this. Okay, so that's how it's laid out. So let me go ahead and move these off here again. And then we'll go ahead and add the adhesive and spread everything out. Okay, let's go ahead and, and spread some adhesive on here. So I'm going to start up here at the far end and work my way down and go off on a tangent following this line right on out here to where I've marked the end point. Then I'm going to come back down here and go through this one. And we'll come back in here a little bit too and do parts of this. Okay, I'm going to bring it right on down through here, filling in as we go.
Okay, that's spread it out fairly well. Okay, now that we have the adhesive all spread out, let's go back um, and mark a few spots so that we can trace the line through here because we can lose it fairly easily. But just doing this, it allows you to see those lines that you've made here uh, with the green marker. Okay. And stay along the lines or stay within the lines, whichever is appropriate. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy down in here and start setting him in place like so and move on along. Okay, we start to deviate right here. Okay. And then coming up, I'm going to put a pin here. Come on around. Bring it right to here at the end. Okay, that's going to give me a nice smooth transition there. Now bring this back off and we'll start laying the rest of the track, or the rest of the roadbed anyway. Okay, bring that in, close it, bring it up to the uh, to the little green line there. And we'll roll it out here nice and straight. Like that. And then we need to start adding our little spacers between here. And then we got to bring this one in here, out there, add this guy, and then pull everything into place. Get everybody tightened up here. There we go. And that little crack there I'll fill with ballast. It's not an issue. Or I could just put a little bit of the adhesive down in there and that will act as a filler as well. So now it's simply a matter of letting it dry for several hours and then we'll sand it down and we'll be ready to drop the turnout into place right there following the guidelines that I, uh, or following the method that I showed in the video on installing uh, Pico Electrofog turnouts, you, do, you would do the same thing with one of these because this one, it does not have a wire here on the bottom uh, for making the, uh, uh, for electrifying the frog, but it does have this little spot of bronze uh, from the casting that you can solder to. So I typically will solder a wire to the bottom here and just drop it through like I do with the electrophorks. So this uses a bronze casting. Here. Okay. okay, that's all there is to creating your own uh, turnout road bed. Well, that's a wrap for today. I hope you're ready now to, you know, create your own buried track here on, on your layout and uh, install your fascia. They're pretty straightforward. And of course, preparing your road bed for adding turnouts on your layout. So give that a try on your next layout. And, you know, have a great week, and we'll see you here again on Friday with another video. Bye now.